Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. We're going to be looking at what's the difference between an exact answer and a decimal approximation, particularly when you're working with radicals or square roots. So the first thing is that an exact answer is going to have radical in the answer. It's going to have a square root in the answer. That's what exact means. Because as soon as I type that into my calculator and I write down a decimal, that's going to be a decimal approximation. It's confusing because a lot of students think a decimal is more exact than something with a radical, whereas in fact it's not. For example, if I were to type into my calculator square root of 2, I would get 1.4142135, but of course I'm not going to write that on my paper. I would just write 1.41 on my paper. So in fact, the square root of 2 implies more decimal spots. It's more exact than writing down 1.4142 even. Even if I keep four decimal places, it's still less exact than just plain old root 2. So we're going to try it in this problem. Um, it's really important that you guys practice with your own calculator, the calculator you use in class, because every calculator is different. And the way you type it in is different on every calculator. So like for example, let's say I wanted to do a decimal for this fraction. Um, a lot of students will type this into their calculator. They'll do 12 plus root 18 divided by 4. And I think if you do that, you get um, something like 13.06. That, in fact, is not correct, because what your calculator is doing is it's doing 12 plus root 18 divided by 4 like that. And that's not what we want. We want 12 plus root 18 all divided by 4. So you have to do it a little bit differently. Um, here's how you would do it properly. First, you type in either parentheses and do 12 plus root 18, close parentheses, then divide by 4. You should get approximately 4.06. Or a good way to do it is to do 12 plus root 18 first, hit the equal sign, and then when you keep that answer on the screen, then hit divided by 4. So that's one way to get the decimal approximation for that guy. Go ahead and practice it with 12 minus root 18 divided by 4, and if you're doing it correctly, you should get 1.94. So I jumped right to the decimal approximations. I didn't simplify it at all. Let's go ahead and do an exact answer, which is where I simplify the radical. So what I would do is think about square root of 18, and instead of square root of 18, I want to use a product of numbers where one of them has a perfect square. Like, for example, instead of using 6 and 3, that wouldn't help me because I don't know the square root of 6 nor 3. I'm going to make that the product of square root of 9 and square root of 2 because square root of 9 is regular old 3. So what I'm working with now is 12 plus 3 root 2 divided by 4. What I'm going to do to simplify that is write it as two separate fractions, 12 over 4 plus or minus 3 root 2 over 4, and simplify them separately. The first fraction, of course, is just 3. So this is my exact answer. Um, up here, I have my two decimal approximations. And to check your work, you could try doing a decimal approximation of this version. Try this on your calculator. See if you can do this correctly. I want to type in there 3 plus 3 root 2 divided by 4, but I have to know the order of operations correctly. Notice how in this situation, the 3 root 2 is all that's divided by 4. So I could type it in my calculator like this. 3 plus 3 root 2 divided by 4. That would work out. Um, another way you could do it is do the 3 root 2 bit first, and then hit equals, whatever your answer is, divide by 4, and then whatever that, you hit equals again, whatever that is, and then add 3 to it. You should get that same 4.06 as what we had before. Same idea as if I do 3 minus 3 root 2 divided by 4, I should get that decimal approximation from before. Okay, so this sounds like it's easy stuff. It sounds like it's easy to type things in a calculator. And a lot of students think, yes, I have a calculator. It's going to make everything so much easier. Whereas, in fact, sometimes it's harder. In particular, you need to practice with your own calculator. Because if you go into a test and you're using one where you're not familiar with the buttons, you can't find the square root button, you're going to be dead meat. It's super important that you use, um, you practice with what you're going to be using on a test. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be... Less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, to fix. Yeah. <laughs>